Hello and welcome to the Cat Island Beach Bag. I'm so excited to be able to crochet this with you. Please be sure to read the introduction to this pattern and see some gorgeous pictures from the Cat Island that the designer visited. I'm going to be using Patton's Hempster, which is a blend of 55% hemp and 45% cotton for my bag in this bright, cheery sort of coral color. I'm also using a 3.5 millimeter hook. I tend to crochet a little bit loose, so I always like to go down a hook size for my projects, especially for a bag. So we're going to start with our loop on the hook and chain two to start. And then we will work into the second chain <clears throat> from our hook. So that first chain we made, and we're going to make 12 half double crochet into that chain. So 12 half double crochet around. I did actually go back and redo my chain two to make it just a bit looser to give me a bit more room for my half double crochet. So then we can go ahead and join to that starting half double crochet with the slip stitch. Now, if you prefer, you are able to start with a magic circle and work 12 half double crochet into the magic circle as well, or you can work into that first chain stitch, whichever you're more comfortable with. So 12 half double crochet to finish off round one. Round two, we will start with the chain one and we're going to work two half double crochet in each stitch around. So the starting one is that very first stitch where we have the chain one, and we'll just continue to work two half double crochet in each stitch around for a total of 24 half double crochet. And you can join to the first one to complete round two. Round three, we will chain one and work two half double crochet in that first stitch. So at the base of that chain one, we will make two half double crochet. Now, if you find it a bit easier, if you prefer, you can put a stitch marker in that first half double crochet to clearly mark the beginning of the round when you come around the other side to know which stitch to join to. So two half double crochet in the first stitch and then one half in the next. And we'll just complete that around the circle, alternating between two half double crochet in one stitch and one half double crochet in the next. Two in one stitch and then one in the next. So you can continue that around for 36 half double crochet in round three. Round four, we'll start with a chain one again and two half double crochet in that first stitch at the base of the chain one. So two half double crochet. So for this round, we will make one half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And we'll repeat that around. So two half double crochet in the same stitch and then one half double crochet in each of the next two. Okay, and then when you're finished this round, you should have 48 half double crochet to join to the first stitch. Round five, we'll chain one again, two half double crochet in that same stitch. And then we'll work one single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One and two and three. So two half in the first stitch, one half double crochet in each of the next three. And we'll continue that around. Two half double crochet in one stitch and then one in the next three. Two and three. So you should have a total of 60 half double crochet on round five. And again, we'll join with a slip stitch to the starting half double crochet. 
round six, continuing on with our increase rounds, chain one again, and the two half double crochet in that first stitch. And then this time we will make a half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. So you can continue that sequence around for round six. So two, half double crochet in one stitch, followed by a half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. Two, three, and four. So round six should have a total of 72 half double crochet, and we will join with the slip stitch again to the starting half double crochet. Round seven, our final round of increases. So we'll chain one again, two half double crochet in that first stitch. One and two. And then we will work one half double crochet in each of the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. So you can continue that around, two half double crochet in one stitch, and then one half double crochet in each of the next five. Should give us a total of 84 half double crochet. And again, join to that starting half double crochet. So you can see my base measures in at just about five inches, which is the same as about 13 centimeters. A little slightly larger than um, the measurements the designer gave, but fairly close to that. So again, depending on the yarn and the hook, your measurements may be different, but that's how mine is measuring at this point. So round eight, we are going to start with a chain one again. Now from here on in, in the uh, in the pattern, we're going to do what's called a long chain. So just sort of lift that loop just a little bit higher and then chain one to make it easier to work a double crochet into that first stitch. If that's not working well for you, you can go ahead and chain two. Uh, but if you just stretch or pull that first loop of the chain one just a little bit longer, it should work. So we make a double crochet in that first stitch and in each stitch around, which will be 84 double crochet for round eight. So round eight was our double crochet all the way around. You can see how it's starting to curve up now to form the sides. My base is a little bit wavy at this point, but I'm fairly confident that as we work the sides, that will work its way out. So for round nine, we will make the chain one again, that longer chain. We're going to front post double crochet around six stitches and then back post double crochet around six. So for the front post, We'll just yarn over, we go around that starting double crochet for one, two. So again, if you're unfamiliar with the post stitches, you yarn over first to insert from the front around the back of the stitch instead of working through the top loops and out to the front again. Then yarn over, pull the loop through, and then you yarn over and pull through two twice to complete a double crochet. So that's three front post double crochet, four, five, and the final one is six. So six front post double crochet, and then we will back post double around the next six. So similar to the front, you yarn over. This time we insert from the back to the front around that double crochet and back out to the back. Pull that yarn through for three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So that's a back post double crochet. Oops. So 
to three four five and six back post double crochet and then that gives that little ridge in the front, but we'll make, make an interesting texture as we continue to work. So we'll just complete that around. So the, five, the six front post half double crochet, two, three, four, five and six front post double crochet and then six back post double crochet one two three four five and six okay, and again you should have 84 stitches at the end of this round so your work will likely look something like this when we have it sort of flat it'll be kind of ruffled like that remembering we're working around the outside and eventually the sides will be long enough that they will just stand up nicely around our base circle. So for the following, for this round, which is round 10, and the following rounds, we are going to slip stitch into the next stitch to start our work. <clears throat> so from here, the second front post double crochet is where we'll make our starting long chain one, and then we'll work a front post double crochet for the next six stitches. So that's one, two, three. So these stitches so far are working around the front post double crochet from last round. We'll have five that are worked around the front post double crochet. So I've now made, we moved over one stitch and then started in that second front post double. So now we have three, four, five, front post double around front post double. We're going to make one more front post double, but it will be around this first back post double crochet. So we'll make a front post oops, around there. So we're going to stagger, sort of offset each repeat, moving it over one stitch. So now we're ready to do our back post double crochet. So we'll make six back post double crochet, the first five, are around the back post doubles from last round. Three, four, and five. So we need one more back post double, which will be around that first front post of the next set from last round. So our sixth back post double goes around that front post double. Then we'll continue that around. So six front post doubles. One, two, three, four, and five. And then remember the sixth one goes around that next back post double. And then we will work our six back post double. So the first five again are around a back post double from last round. It's two, three, four, five, and then remember the sixth one goes around that front post double for our sixth. Okay, 
sequence. We'll continue to work that sequence around. You can see how the, the ridges are sort of stepping over one stitch. So you can complete this round. I'll meet you back here at the end. So I'm finishing up round 10. I've made my last five back post double crochet and I'm ready for my final sixth back post double. So we have that long chain in front of that front post double. I'm going to work around both the chain and the front post double to make my final back post double crochet of round 10. Then we can go ahead and join to our starting front post double to complete round 10. So when you come to the final stitch of the round, here I'm going to be working a back post double crochet around a front post. We have this chain one from the previous round and then the stitch. So you work that last stitch going around both the chain one and the post stitch from the previous round to finish our back post stitch. So the next few rounds, 11, 12, and 13, will be worked in the same way. So we've made our joining slip stitch. We'll slip stitch over to the next front post double so we can begin round 11 with that extra long chain one and then front post double there. And just like we did in round 10, the sixth front post double will be around that first back post double and then we'll work six back post double and the sixth one will be around that front post. So you can go ahead and work rounds 11, 12, and 13 the same way we did round 10 and I'll meet you back here for round 14. When you've completed round 13 you can see how your work will be standing up a little bit more like a, a bag shape. We have joined to our starting stitch. What we're going to do now is turn the work so we'll be working from the inside of the bag. We want to slip stitch to the top of the next stitch like so. Chain one, so that long chain one again and then we're going to front post double crochet for six stitches and back post for six. So the front post will go around um, what was a back post on the other side one, two, front post double crochet, three, four, five, and then the sixth front post double crochet will go around one that was a front post from on the previous side. So we'll make that a front post there. And then we're ready to begin six back post double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five back post double crochet, and then the sixth one will go around this first one of the other set. So it looks like a front post from the inside. That's where our sixth back post double crochet will go around. So we've done from the inside of the bag, we've worked six front post double crochet, six back post double crochet. And so you can see here how we've started to go back in the other direction from the front. So you can just continue to work that around the bag. Six front post double crochet and then six back post double crochet. And I'll meet you back here at the end of round 14. So I've worked my way around round 14. I've made my last or my six back post double around that starting double. And then we'll join with a slip stitch to our starting front post double crochet to finish off round 14. So rounds 15 through 19 are going to be a repeat of round 10. So for round 10, we've slip stitched in our first stitch to join and then we slip stitch into that next one, do our long chain one, and then from there begin our six front post double crochet and six back post double crochet all the way around. 
Okay, so each row will be moving over the sets of six by one stitch. So you go ahead and work through to the end of round 19. So when we've completed round 19 and joined to that starting stitch, we will once again turn our work to work on the right side again. So for round 20, when we turn our work, uh, we want to slip stitch over, so this is our last stitch that we made on round 19. We want to slip stitch over to the next stitch where we can chain one, that long chain one, and begin our set of five front post double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Again, we'll go around that first of the back post or what looks like back post from the previous round. So we can start to zigzag back the other direction. So six front post followed by the six back post again. One, two, three, four, five, and then six will be around that first of what looks like the front post double crochet from last round. So you can continue to alternate the six front post, six back post double crochet around this round and join to the start of the stitch and I'll meet you back at the end of round 20. So when you've worked your way around round 20, I've got my final back post double crochet there and then I'll slip stitch to the starting stitch. For rounds 21 through 25, we'll again repeat round 10. So we'll slip stitch over one more, do our long chain one, and then start our set of six front post double and six back post double. So at the end of round 25, we can go ahead and join to the top of our starting front post double crochet. And then we're going to turn our work again to work from the inside around. So um, when we do that, we need to slip stitch. I like to slip stitch on the top of our turning stitch and slip stitch into the next one. And then from there, we'll do that long chain one and start our series of six front post double crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, and remembering the sixth one will go around that first stitch of the previous set of six stitches. And then we'll switch to the back post double crochet for six of those as well. So we'll complete that round and then rounds 27 to 31, we'll repeat round 10 again, working from the inside of our bag. So I'll meet you back here at the end of round 31. So we've completed round 31, we will turn to work on the outside of the bag again. I have finished my row, my round 32. So what we are doing for rounds 32 to 43 is repeating rounds 20 to 31 one more time. So you'll do another set of these two where we zigzag this way and then come back this way. So that should take you to round 43. If you want to add more depth to your bag, certainly you can repeat those sections another time as well. That's up to you. So I'll see you back here at round 43 to do our top band. So when you have completed round 43 or um, whatever depth you've chosen for your bag, we will start to work the top band. So we're working again from the outside. So if you need to turn, please do so. 
So working from the outside of the bag, we will chain one and then single crochet in that first stitch or that joining stitch. Okay. We will not be joining to this single crochet, so I advise putting a stitch marker in there so when we come back to it in this round, we know where our starting part is for the next round. So round 44, we chained one and single crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch around. So we'll do a round of single crochets round 44. So at the end of round 44 we should have 84 single crochet. And then we will just go ahead and start a next single crochet in that very first single crochet. So don't join with a slip stitch, just continue single crocheting along. I'm going to mark that starting single crochet again. And round 45, we'll work another round of single crochet in each stitch. So for round 46, so we will be making um, eyelets for the drawstring to go through. So again, we will start with a single crochet in that first stitch. So I'll make my single crochet. I'm going to mark that first stitch again for this round and single crochet in the next stitch as well. So one single crochet in each of the first two stitches. Chain two, we'll skip two stitches, one, two, and single crochet in four. One, two, three, and four. And we'll continue that around. So chain two, skip two, single crochet in four, two, three, and four, single crochet. So you can work your way around. When we get to the end, we should have 14 of these chain two spaces or eyelets. So I'll see you back here at the end of this round. On the last repeat of round 46, after we chain two, we will skip two and then we'll just make two single crochet and we'll join up with our starting two single crochet to make those four single crochet in a row. Then for round 47 we will continue just single crocheting in each stitch and chain across. So I'll make my first single crochet of the round, mark that starting stitch again. So we'll single crochet in the two single crochet at the start of the round and then in the chain two space we'll make two single crochet. So single crochet in each of the single crochets so that'll be four here one two three four and then two single crochet in each of those chain two spaces. You continue that around and I'll meet you back here at the end of this round. So at the end of round 47, I've done my two single crochet in the last chain two space, which should leave us with two single crochet. So we will place a single crochet in each of those two stitches where we should meet our starting stitch of the round. <clears throat> so for round 48, we are going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around again. So I'm just marking my first stitch so I know where to stop. <laughs> so place a single crochet in each of the stitches all around. Round 49 and our final round for our Cat Island bag. We are going to make a slip stitch in the top of each of our single crochet around. I'm just leaving my stitch marker there so I know when I've gone around. So we'll just slip stitch in each stitch around. When we get to the end of the round, we'll just overlap a few stitches of slip stitches and then we'll fasten off this round. So I'll meet you back there in a few minutes. So I'm at the end of round 49, I'm going to remove my stitch marker. The pattern suggests to work a few extra slip stitches 
past that joining there and then you can go ahead and fasten off. Now when I do slip stitches and I want to fasten off I actually remove my loop from the hook, insert my hook from the back of the next stitch and pull that loop, better tighten that a bit, then I pull that loop through to the back and fasten off on the back side then. So don't forget to weave in your ends. <clears throat> so to make the drawstring, you're going to chain 150. I've done a smaller chain right now just to show you how we're going to do this. So once you've chained your 150, <clears throat> you're just going to work back down the chains and making a slip stitch. So we'll skip that first chain and then the second chain from the hook. We'll just go through there and complete a slip stitch. So you'll just slip stitch back down the chains you made to make a little thicker drawstring. You'll work your way back down and that makes our drawstring. When you've completed your drawstring, we're going to weave it through or thread it through the eyelets. So we'll start from the outside to the inside and just go back and forth around through these eyelets or those chain two spaces that we made. And then next comes the fun part where you can embellish it however you like to make this uniquely your own. I'm going to try a, a wooden bead and a couple charms on mine and uh, I'll show you the finished project at the end. So hopefully you enjoyed this bag, um, dreaming of the sunny southern islands of your own or whatever you find to use it for. I hope you enjoy.